Hello, my name's Richard Lancaster and I'm a member of the environmental group Greenpeace and I'd like to thank your teachers here at Cotton School for giving me the opportunity to talk to you today. I'm going to start by asking a simple question. If I showed you this and said what do these companies make? You'd look at the packet and you'd rightly say, oh I know what they are, they're breakfast cereals. And of course you'd be right. And if I asked you to look at these and said, well what do these companies make? You'd look at them and you'd say, well that's water, so those are water companies, they make water. But of course you can't really make water. So what these companies really make is not water, but plastic bottles. And of course Effectively, once these bottles are finished with, you've drunk the water and you're just left with pollution. So what these companies really make is pollution. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Plastics and pollution. So let's go back to the beginning. Where do plastics come from? Well, they're all the result of an invention by somebody called Dr. Leo Hendrik Bakeland, who back in 1909 invented the very first plastic and in a rather um, immodest move he called it Bakelite after himself. Now Dr Bakeland worked out a way of taking thick black oil and turning it into a mouldable plastic and today we have a huge industry built around taking oil and through a refining process producing little plastic chips like this which can then be made into all of the things that we're used to having made out of plastic. And of course plastic's used in all sorts of ways. Things like the pipes in the road outside your house which carry the water, gas and electricity are made out of plastic. And that's a great use for plastic because plastic is very durable, it lasts forever so that once they're in the ground they require no maintenance. Plastic's also good for making things around the house like vacuum cleaners and hair dryers and televisions and radios. It can be moulded into different shapes. It's light, it's cheap, it's durable. But the third thing that we are now using plastic for is for packaging. Packaging for food, plastic bottles, plastic food containers and so on. Now, back in 1909, there was only one type of plastic and that was Bakelite. And for many years, plastic didn't really take off. But around the 1950s, which is sort of the time that many of your grandparents were born, it started to become popular. And then by the 1980s and 1990s, which is sort of the time that maybe your parents were born, it was getting more and more popular. And now if we look back to say 2014 where maybe some of your younger brothers and sisters were born it's becoming very popular. So you can see in this bar chart how the growth of plastic production has been exponential over those years. Now not all plastic's bad, some's great. Some of you might have had or might still have Lego and toys like Lego are brilliant. You can uh, they're very durable, you can play with them loads of times, and when you're finally finished with it, you can pass it on to somebody else. Brilliant. But there's other uses of plastic that are not good and not brilliant. And the problem is that we're using plastic which lasts forever for things like this. With this is a plastic container holding tomatoes. And of course, once we've eaten the tomatoes, we're left with something which we can't use for anything else, and it's just going to get thrown away. And that's what we use, called single-use or disposable plastic. And the problem is it's very difficult to avoid. And some of the plastic is just completely bonkers. So if we look at this here, you can see that there's bananas, individual bananas, or a couple of bananas that have been peeled and then wrapped in plastic. A plastic tube with four apples in it. A plastic box with a peeled orange plastic box with a uh, cauliflower and perhaps most mad of all individually shrink plastic wrapped strawberries I think that was for a Valentine's Day treat 
But it's actually very difficult to avoid plastic because supermarkets seem to wrap everything in plastic these days. And that means that now there are billions of tonnes of plastic in the world. And this just shows somebody trying to sort through some of it, surrounded by literally thousands and thousands of plastic bottles that have been discarded. So, but if plastic lasts forever, where is all the plastic that's been made, all those billions of tonnes, where have they ended up? Well, about 9% has been recycled. 12% has been incinerated, i.e. burnt. But the rest, 79%, has either ended in landfills, which are rubbish dumps to you and me, or it's ended up in the environment, which just means literally kicking around in the world somewhere. And a lot of the plastic ends up getting washed out to sea. And the way it does it is that, first of all, um, litter, where people drop litter in the streets, it get, get, gets blown down, there's storm drains, and the storm drains wash out into rivers and then ultimately into the sea. Some plastic literally goes down the plug hole in your house because lots of synthetic clothing contains plastic and little bits of plastic fibre leach from that clothing every time they're washed and it goes down the plug hole. And as I said, those landfill or rubbish dumps, if they're anywhere near the coast or near a river, then when a strong wind blows, plastic gets blown off them into the rivers and then into the oceans. And up till now, the problem has been bad with plastic bottles, plastic bags, plastic straws and so on getting washed into the ocean. But the COVID-19 pandemic has caused an even bigger problem. And this next short piece of film that I'm going to show you shows you some of the problems that we're now encountering as a result of the COVID pandemic. We have the coronavirus and all these masks are now washing up on the beaches. That was in February, and that was a, a far-flung beach. I mean, it was nowhere near the city. And then since then, we've obviously gone to other beaches nearer the city, and we're seeing masks washing up. So it's June the 1st here in Hong Kong, and uh, come down the beach, we're still finding lots of these. There was so much of this people all over the foreshore. I stopped counting, it's around 15, uh, but there were plenty going off into the distance. It's important to understand we had a tremendously grave crisis before the pandemic even started in terms of uh, plastic waste in the ocean. And now you take the global pandemic. At the current rate, we're putting 129 billion, and I'm saying billion, face masks into the environment every single month. 65 billion plastic gloves into the environment every single month. A significant portion of those will be disposed of improperly and will wind up in the ocean. The glove or the mask that you take off and you casually disregard because you think it was safe for that day could easily be the glove or the mask that kills a whale. So understand that, that the simple human act of indifference or of safety may have a tremendously deleterious effect on the other end. So that was pretty scary and of course a lot of the plastic does look like food to animals so you can see here especially things like turtles when they see a plastic bag it looks like a jellyfish which is one of their main foods and so they uh, they'll try and eat it and of course it will kill them and the stupid part about all of this covid ppe equipment is that most of it is not necessary in fact most of us could get by with a cotton or cloth mask that can be washed and reused time and time again. 
And in fact, in a recent study, the best homemade cloth masks provided better filtration than surgical ones. And that's a peer reviewed study. So just wearing a cloth mask and making sure we wash our hands is as good a protection as any. And we don't need disposable gloves and we certainly don't need disposable masks. So all of this plastic, what can we do about it? Well, one thing, one solution might be recycling and recycling is important. Um, if we recycle plastic, sometimes it could be made into more clothing, trainers, things like plastic spoons, even garden furniture. But recycling isn't the whole solution. And here's why. There's just too much of it. This shows the whopping pile of bottles that were put for recycling in Bristol in one day. That's just one day's uh, pile of plastic bottles. And the thing about recycling is it's actually very labour intensive and it's not a perfect art. It's in fact quite imperfect. A lot of the stuff that goes in for recycling doesn't get recycled. It can't be. And so recycling can't solve the problems because there's just too much plastic being produced. So somehow we have to reduce the amount of plastic. And the other thing that's worth bearing in mind is that not everything is recycled in the same way. So if we look here, aluminium cans, steel cans and um, glass can be recycled indefinitely. Newspaper and paper can be recycled four to six times and then the fibres get too short and it has to be put for um, composting. But plastic, if you look here, plastic has a limited number of times it can be recycled. So your nice clear plastic bottle can be recycled, but it's recycled quite often as a coloured plastic, plastic bottle. And then after a few times, it ends up being recycled as a black bin liner and going into landfill. So plastic recycling has a limited capability and it won't get rid of all of the plastic that we produce. So... We need to be like this young girl and we have to say no to plastic, no to single use plastic. Well, it's easy to say, but is it easy to do? Well, first of all, if you've got plastic bottles and things and you're finished with them, look to see if there's some other use. Here they're being used as planters or as a bird feeder. But what we really need to do is to reduce the plastic at source. That means carrying a steel or a hard plastic reusable water bottle and refilling it wherever you see the re refill sign. It means saying no to things like plastic straws and it means taking your own keep cup when you go to the cafe. It means things like getting your bo glass bottles for your milk rather than plastic bottles so that you reduce the amount of plastic there and it means taking things like your own bag for life and not using tea bags which contain plastic but using loose tea and a teapot like this and if you do have a sweet tooth and you really do want that fizzy drink then again it's much better to go for a glass or an aluminium can or a glass bottle or an aluminium can rather than a plastic bottle because as I said earlier glass and aluminium can be recycled indefinitely it also means avoiding those liquid soaps in plastic bottles and going for a simple bar of soap. And it also means seeking out places where you can avoid buying things that are already wrapped in plastic. And one way of doing that is to look for zero waste shops. Where I live in Nailsey, there's one called Simply Green. You go in there with your own containers and uh, they'll fill those up with whatever you're buying rather than everything being wrapped in plastic and also you can seek out green grocers like this where most of the fruit and vegetables are loose rather than being wrapped in plastic and you can also remember the four R's refuse refuse things you don't need like straws and plastic bags take your own bag reduce reduce the amount that you do consume and that goes across the board from anything from reducing the amount of things that you buy if you don't need them 
to just reduce the amount of electricity you need, turning off lights when you leave a room. Reuse. Reuse your bag for life and your keep cup so that you don't need takeaway cups and you don't need plastic bags. And when you finally finish with something, make sure you wash it out and put it in the recycling so that it can be collected and made into something new. And schools all have their part to play. And uh, a number of schools are joining this Plastic Clever Schools initiative. And uh, I'm sure your school has got a number of initiatives that you can be taking part in. And then finally, if you would like to know how much you're contributing to the plastic problem, you can find out your own plastic footprint. If you go to the Greenpeace website, there's a calculator there that will help you find out how much plastic you're using and to give you some suggestions of ways that you can reduce it. But if you are using the internet, then please to check with your parents or carers first. So that's the end of this short talk. Thank you very much for uh, watching.